Hello guys, I'm Kunal and I'm a fifth year medic at UCL. In today's video, I'll be running through a walkthrough of the quantitative reasoning section of the UCAT. So I know it's a very stressful exam for everyone sitting it and I know how difficult it, it can be to revise for the UCAT in general. So in today's video, hopefully I can give you some tips and an insight into what it's like to actually sit the exam and the thinking process that goes into it. So I sat the UCAT five years ago and I managed to score 900 in the quantitative reasoning as well as a few other sections as well. A lot of it I'm sure is down to luck, but also I feel that I used some really good techniques just to help me save time and also just to improve the ways I was doing the questions. And hopefully over the course of this video and future videos, I can share these with you. So with quantitative reasoning, it's, it's, it can be a very challenging section. A lot of students don't like to do mental maths and they struggle with this, the pace of the section in general. For me, the best tips I would give you is to learn each skill individually. So the quantitative reasoning can be broken down into lots of topics. Things like percentages, ratios, speed distance time, area questions, means, etc. Have all of these on lockdown. And if you go through each skill step by step, you shouldn't go too far wrong in the actual exam. Also, in the exam, you get a UCAT calculator. I'm sure you've heard of this. And this calculator is a very slow calculator. It's one of those like Windows old fashioned type calculators. And that really slows you down in the exam. You haven't got one of your quick scientific calculators you can whiz, whiz, like, whiz around with and do quick calculations with. So instead, you're going to be slowed down with calculations. So the best thing to do is to reduce the number of calculations you do and also find shortcuts. So wherever you can do that in the UCAT exam, wherever you can perhaps estimate instead of working precisely, wherever you can cut corners um, in a safe way, of course, do so because that will help you save time and speed up and get to grips with the actual challenges of the exam. So that's just a couple of tips from me um, and I'll give you some more in future videos. But for now, we'll move on to the actual walkthrough. OK, guys, so I've got the mock set up on my screen and we're, and we're ready to go. So this is practice test C. Um, so I advise that you have a look at it. I've skipped through to the quantitative reasoning section. So I advise maybe you pause this video now and have a go at this test yourself. I'll be doing this test and I've set up a like, virtual whiteboard here where I can just type things in and type calculations in, uh, etc. So um, I'll type things there just so you can see. Obviously in the, in the actual thing you'll be writing things out and I'll try to explain things as much as possible but obviously I'm trying to do this on, under time conditions. So we're ready to go now, okay? Okay, so this question's about lots of mountains and some valleys. Okay, so the Southern Hemisphere mountain with the median height is, so I'll skip to the question. So you want the Southern Hemisphere mountain with the median height. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, nine mountains in total. And we want the Southern Hemisphere mountain, okay? So, um, I would say we want the Southern Hemisphere only. So there's one, two, three, four, five Southern Hemisphere mountains. So we want the third highest. So we want Akakangu as the highest, then Kilimanjaro, then Vincent Massif. Okay. Akatsun is the same as Vincent Massif, actually. But Vincent Massif has got higher feet. Okay. So Vincent Massif is the third highest. The mountain whose height is closest to the mean height of those listed in the table is... Okay, so here we want our calculator to work out the mean height. Yeah, so to work out the mean, we want to add up all the totals. So we're going to do a shortcut here. So do 59 plus 49 plus 88 plus 22 plus 56 plus 48 plus 49 plus 62 plus 70 divided by nine mountains. That's 5,588. I just got rid of the zeros. So the highest, the closest is um, Elbrus. Okay. In approximately which direction would an airplane have to fly from London to Aconcagua? 
So London, London, London. London's not here. Is London mentioned here? No, it's not. Okay, so we'll assume it's in Europe. Well, it is in Europe, but we'll use Europe values. Aconcagua. So we want from north to south, northeast to southwest. So that's just towards southwest. The mountain which is on the line of longitude furthest away from longitude zero is. So we want longitude, the highest value. So that's McKinley. Summarize the bullet points have some things tricking you out, but I don't really have time to check. I'm just going to make sure, just going to take a punt on that. So there's a new, new table, new question now on waste disposal for different years and different types of waste disposal. Okay. So during 06, 07, out of the total waste disposed, 69.5% was household waste. Okay. So what was non-household waste? So that's 30.5%. So 30.5% times the total of this. So that's 25,000, 27,000, 27,500. So I'm going to do 0 0.305, so 30.5% times 27,500. I've done, I've done the wrong number, but we need to round up a little bit. 8357, so that's the one. Okay. During 0102, which is not on here, the amount of waste disposed in landfills and recycled was three times the waste disposed in landfills and incinerated in 0708. So the amount in 0708 for landfills and recycling, no, sorry, landfills and incinerated is 18,500. So you times that by three. 18,500 times by three. So that's, that's the amount landfills and recycled, okay. So that's 55,500. Okay. The amount of waste recycled during 2010, 2011, so that's here, was 2.5 times the waste recycled during 0203, which we don't know. So I'll, I'll just, I'll rather just do this calculation now quickly whilst I'm on it. So 10,000 is what's recycled then, divided by 0 0.25 is 4,000. So 4,000 is what we have, is recycled. If 246 is not recycled, what was the total amount disposed? So that'll be adding 4,500, adding 4,000, sorry, to this, which is 25708, I think. Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna flag that previous question because I'm not too sure if I did the right thing there. Okay, um, what's the average amount of waste disposed in landfills per year from 06 to 2012? Okay, so this is 13.083, so that's for, for six years, we're missing a value. So let's add up the values, first of all. Um, so we've got 16,000 plus 15,500 plus 14,000 plus 12,500 plus 11, one, two, three. So that's um, that, so that's 69,000 we've, which we've got. So 69,000 we've got so far, 13,083 times six is 78,498. So you minus that from what we've got so far, and that's the missing value. So that's 9,498, great. Sorry, I can't really explain that properly. I haven't got much time. So Jenna bought only material. So what's this about, new set? So we've got different hoardings and different things you can buy. So Jenna bought only material for an A0 and A2 hoarding and had them delivered across a distance of 32 kilometers. And a discount was given, okay. So she had bought just the material for A0. So material for A2 is 40, plus A0 is 30. No, 70, because you had the 40. So 30 more, plus 70. So that's 110. And then delivered over 32 kilometers, so that's 1250 plus seven kilometers excess times three is 21. Okay, which equals 33 pound 50. And the discount was given on just the cost of the material. So 20% discount on that. So you minus 22 from that, which is 88. So 88 plus 33 pound 50. Okay. It's one, two, one pound 50. Great. Okay. Maria bought a few A3 sized hoardings. 
all the hoardings have artwork and square cut finishing. Okay, so we have A3 size hoarding. So uh, she paid, they told us how much she paid. How many hoardings did she buy? Okay, so we're going to work out the price. So A3 hoarding is 50 for the hoarding plus 16 for the artwork just rounding up and square cut finishing is 15. So that means it is in total 81 per hoarding. So 323 divided by 81 is 4, roughly. Damon buys one payment display and two banner stands and has them delivered to his office. That's 20 kilometers from the store. Okay, so one payment display. So that's 25 for the payment display. And the banner stands are 20 more. So that's 45 times 2 is 90. And has them delivered 20 kilometers from the store. And that's fine. That's 12.50. So that's under 25 kilometers. So that is... Um, hundred and twenty seven pound fifty okay so what's the total cost in buying two payment display stands so that's 50 plus one banner stand that is 45 and have them delivered to a location that's 30 kilometers so we've got a 1250 plus we've got five kilometers excess times three which is 15 so that's 95 that's 95 plus 110 122 pound 50 Okay, so we've got a list of different things you can buy. Okay, fun fair rides. The ages of four members of a family went to a fair of six, 13, 15, 55. All members went ice skating. Okay, first of all, what are the ages? So groups are 20 or more. So this is four members. So it's three adults and one child. Yeah. Okay, so all members went. So let me write that down. Three adults one child okay all members went ice skating giant wheel and snow adventure so ice skating giant wheel snow adventure so let's just work out how much they all spent so the three adults so ice skating giant wheel plus snow adventure would be 15 plus 6 21 for all the three adults so 21 times 3 for the adults for the children it is so ice skating giant wheel that's 10 plus 4 is 14 to so 14 for one of them okay so that's 63 for the three adults plus 14 is 77. And then we've got the 45 on top. So 77 plus 45. Okay. And plus 45. So one, two, three. Okay. So doing mental maths really helps you save time if you are good at that. A group of people bought group tickets for the giant wheel and thrill rides. So giant wheel and thrill rides. So a group here, group. Okay. So giant wheel plus three all rides, that's 15.50. So you wanna do 434 divided by 15.50, I believe. That's 28, okay, brilliant. Okay, so on a Sunday, 129 adults and 216 children visited the fair. Among the visitors, two thirds are adults and three quarters are children. So let's work that out. So. What's a third of one, two, nine? That's 43. So two thirds is 86 adults. And what's a quarter of two, one, six? That's 54. And three is 162 children. Okay, when ice skating. If none of them purchased a group ticket, what was the total amount earned from tickets of ice skating that day? There's no can't tell. Okay, I assume that's everything, everyone that visited. Okay, so 86 adults for ice skating times 8. So 86 times 8 and 162 times 5. So 86 times 8. 688. 688. So 162 times 5. Times 5. Plus 688. So 1498. Awesome. Okay, a group of four adults and a few children went on a giant wheel and snow adventure. So four adults on giant so adults for giant wheel and snow adventure is seven plus six that's thirteen times four. So thirteen times four equals fifty-two for the adults, and then the children went as well. So they paid one three three for the tickets. Um must have been lots of children then. Okay, so we've got 
52 for the adult, so 133 minus 52 we want to do. So 133 minus 52, that's 81. And the giant wheel, a snow adventure are nine together. So 81 divided by nine is nine, so nine children. Okay, so Andy's workplace is three miles away from his house. If he cycles to work, what is the distance in yards? He cycles from his home to his workplace and back each day. So that's six miles, we've got six miles. And we want to convert that into yards. So the miles are here, so we get into kilometers first. So we want to do six divided by one point, oops, sorry, six times 1.61 to get the value in kilometers. So that's 9.66 kilometers. Now convert kilometers into yards. So we need to convert meters. So that's a thousand. That's, that's how many meters we have. And we're going to convert meters into yards. So divide by 0 0.91. And that gives us one. Okay, great, it's that. So Kenny fixed a fence around a regular, a rectangular garden. That's 15 times nine. So 15 feet times nine feet. What's the total length in yards? So length, it's not area. So we don't have to worry about units. So normally it's 30 feet plus 18 feet. So that's 48 feet normally. So it's basically what's 48 feet in yards? So 48 feet, let's convert it into centimeters. That seems like a good place to go. So 48 times 30.5, I'll just rest it around. And then what's that length in yards? So how many meters is that in centimeters? You divide by 100 to get into meters. And then that's when we work out how many yards, you divide by 0.91. Okay, I've done the wrong multiple. But okay, you can see the answer is just out by a value of 100. Okay, so the range of um, infrared security beam is 10 yards. If the range is increased by 10, 4.5 times, what's the new range in inches? So you want to do 10 times 4.5, so that's 45. So 45 yards in inches, basically. What's 45 yards in inches? Okay, so 45 yards, 45 times 0.91. So that's how many meters we've got. Um, to convert that into centimeters times 100. And then we've got this many centimeters into inches. So divide by 2.54. And I can show you in a tutorial how I know that we have to divide and multiply but no time right now. Okay, so um, the next question, the length and width of a new picture is 15.24 and 7.62 set um, respectively. The dimensions increase by the same factor using a software program with the new width 60.96. Um, so it's gone from 7.62 to 60.96, what's the new length? So we wanna do 60. 0.96 divided by 7.62 which equals 8. So 8 times 15.24. 121.92. Oh, I don't want it in feet. Okay, so 121.92 centimeters, which is divided by 30.48 gives you the conversion in feet. So 122 divided by 30.5 because 4. Or maybe I've messed up the units. I'm not sure. I worked too. I've estimated too much. It didn't work precisely it's not enough. So if Amtec um, sells only sedans and hatchbacks, so this is a new set on car sales. Okay, different companies, different types of cars. Okay, so if Amtec sells only sedans and hatchbacks, what percentage of total cars by Amtec are sedans? Okay, so that's just the total, which is nine. 832 plus 1350. That's 11182. So bear that in mind. 11182. 11182. 11182. 11182. 11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.11182.
divided by 2, that's 46,000 roughly, 46,000. And then the number of hatchbacks is roughly 32,500 roughly, divided by 2, because 16 to 15. So we've got 46 minus 16 to 50. She goes 29,750. So we've estimated it'll hopefully be, hopefully be that answer. The sale of hatchbacks by both Dingbot and Yard in the second half of the year was approximately 20% less than their sale in the first half of the year. Um, so it's this first half of the year. Okay. How many more hatchbacks were sold by Yard than Dingbot during the second half of the year? Okay. I'm going to flag this question. It just seems a little bit long. I'm running out of time now. Okay. So the expected total sales of Salzy Sedans. The Salzy Sedans and Hatchbacks the second half of the year is 180,000. What's the expected percentage increase in sales? Okay, so we got 120,000 in the first half, so we just need to do 180,000 divided by 120,000, just do 18 divided by 12. That's 1.5, so 50% increase. Okay, so um, on to the next question. Um, table shows the number of photos on the different websites. So the percentage increase in the number of photos from December 11 to, to March 2012 was the same as from September 11 to December 2011. What was the approximate difference? Okay, so on this website went from 200 to 400, so it doubled, so it doubled again to 600. So, the, so one is 600, the other one went from um, 65 to 630, so what's 630 divided by 625 times 630 again, which equals 635. So, so it's just 35, isn't it? 35 million. Okay, so the table shows, okay, so if the number of photographs in photo access, which is here, increased at the rate at which increased from September 11 to December 2011, so it's just doubled, and that shutter increased at the same rate at which it increased from March 2011 to June 2011, so 1.5 increase, in which month would photo access have more than shutter for the first time? Okay, so for photo access, we'll just write the next few. So we've got 800, then we double to 1,600, then we double to 3,200. Shutter, we times it by 1.5. So we're going to times 630 by 1.5. So 630 times 1.5. So equals 945 and times that 1.5 again, which equals 1417 and times by 1.5 again, which equals 2126. So it should be in March, June, September 2012, I think. Okay, the next one. Photo Access reported that the number of photographs uploaded per minute in 2011 was 20 times the number of photographs uploaded per minute in 2010. So it also reported that three photographs were uploaded per second in 2011. Um, okay. So that means that three times 60 is 180 per second in 20. So we're gonna do 180 times 20. Okay, so... Um, that's 3,600, okay. Okay, so now onto the next question. So, based information, which statement is untrue or true? Okay, so, um, okay, this is, that's wrong, that didn't happen. Number of photosites increase at the same rate. No, this is not the same rate. Um, increase at the same rate during each quarter, not the same rate, from one of the quarters to the next. Yes, it did from here, increased by 25%. So I haven't got time to look at the other one. Okay, so we've got seven questions in three minutes. You need to work very quickly. Approximately what percentage of the total critically endangered species of mammals? Okay, that's a good question to do. So 109 out of the 45 plus 109 plus 118 plus 78. So 109 divided by 350. So 109 divided by 350 equals 31%. Quick, okay, save time. 
What would you, the, pro, the approximate decrease in percentage of each category of species in the endangered risk level to make the total number of species um, in the same level as the total number of species in the vulnerable risk level? So in each category, so you, need to, you need to calculate the total. So 60 plus 98 plus 30 plus 36 equals 224. So you want to go from 224 and endangered down to 50. So 50 plus 39 plus 46, 135. So we need to go from 135, from 224 to 135. So that's the 40% decrease. Due to the effort of bioconservation, it's 20, if 20% 20 of critically endangered mammals are moved to the vulnerable risk and 30% moved to the vulnerable risk. I'm going to flag this again, it seems too long. The primary reason 45% of amphibians, mammals and birds was loss of habitat. 55% of critically endangered birds and 50% were in this. Okay, I'm going to flag this again, there's not much time. The ratio of people having attached to free earlobes is 12 to 13. What's the difference between the number of males with attached earlobes? Okay, the, so this is just females they're showing us here, it shows. Um, Okay, so the ratio is 12 to 13 in, in real life. So there's 25,000 people, so 12,000 must have attached. So that must mean it's the remaining of males have attached. So 7,200 have attached and 13,000 have unattached. So 7,000 males have unattached. So the difference is 200 only. The targeted uh, number of mobiles to be sold during the six month period is 8,000. Okay, so, um, okay, I'm going to have to just guess this. Um, there isn't much time. Okay, we ran out of time, sadly. Incomplete, make sure you don't do anything incomplete. Disaster. Okay, so that's the end of the exam. Timing seems to be an issue. Um, one thing I'll say to you is the actual UCAT exam I found a lot easier than like the couple of the practice tests I did when I was applying. I think these have changed since then. Hopefully they become more realistic, um, but I found it a lot easier in the actual thing. Also, I would say that um, with practice you improve as well. So hopefully your timing will improve. I thought that some of these were quite long, um, these questions, and they seem longer than what I remember having in the actual UCAT and what tends to come up. So hopefully in the actual thing, the techniques I showed you will mean that you finish on time. So let's just skip through the rest of the test. And there we go to quantitative reasoning. So, okay, managed to get 30 out of 36 which is still okay, considering we had to skip like four of them or so. So yeah, that's that's the uh, score I got. Um, let's have a look at a conversion table. 30 out of 36 um, would be 830. Okay, so hopefully that's useful for you. Um, and just next time, I'll perhaps I'll work a little bit faster just to make sure I don't run out of time, okay? And hopefully this video is really useful for you and watch out for future videos where we give you some more tips. Okay. Thanks for watching. Click here to sign up for one-to-one -one tutoring with insider university knowledge, guaranteed improvement, and a personalized experience. Get your medicine offer today.